Welcome to Data Driven Sports Betting. I may train bets and I use my brain to make bets. And in this video, we're going to talk about a concept that's kind of an advanced concept, even for many top down betters. And it's this notion of hold versus width. And this is something that I think a lot of quote unquote sharp sports betters don't even fully get their head around. And we're going to we're going to dive into this and understand first understand what width means then understand what hold is, and then understand why width is not very useful in American odds world, especially, and why hold is, and why it's important to realize that many of you who have been using width a lot, especially when you're using it to filter your bets, that is not the way you want to be doing it. And we're going to explain why, All right? So first and foremost, before I get into the examples, we've got a handful of examples queued up for us. And what we want to do first, though, is just understand, first off, width. What is width and what does it mean? So what width is, is when you have a sports bet, any given market, you could have two different options to make your bet on. You can bet one side, say you have a receptions over at minus 110, and you could have a receptions under on a player prop at minus 110. Those two lines represent either side of the bet that you could make. And what it means is that the book itself is going to get 20 cents for offering that market. So the standard market that you're going to see in football betting, any kind of betting, really, the standard amount is what they call dime lines, minus 110 and minus 110. What that means is that it's a coin flip scenario. That's where you have the spread. You know, the one football team could be three point favorite or, or whatever, but you're going to see the price that they're charging on either side, usually uh, kind of straddling that zero mark you have, or that hundred mark if you're using American odds. And in that, you're going to have extra added on either side so that the sports book basically has a margin of error where they, they basically need truth to exist between those two and take action on both sides, this is the payment they get for having both sides on offer uh, to anyone who wants to show up. Unless you're a sharp sports better and then they limit you or ban you anyway, but separate, uh, separate scenario. One would think that the sports books would be excited, given that they have this margin, to take bets on either side from anybody. That's not always the case, but that's how it should work, right? So that's our dime line, right? So minus 110 on either side. It works that way across any different pricing, any different odds. So you have a money line where you could have a heavy favorite and have your underdog. Together, they're going to add up to some amount that is negative. So if you add, you know, minus 150 and plus 130, you still end up with minus 20, right? So that on a sense basis in an American odd setting, that is literally the price that they charge for offering that market of bets, right? That simple market. Now, here's the problem. While that is true that that is the actual amount of dollars and cents that they get, when you think about what it implies, it's actually pretty different to offer it at minus 110 and minus 110 when it's a coin flip scenario and when it's 20 cents when you're comparing a like a, even just a minus 150 at plus 130 what that implies because those numbers are higher but the cents difference is still 20 on a percentage basis that's much lower hold right so that means the on a percentage basis the cash hold is the same but on a percentage basis the amount that the book is taking for offering that market is less why does that matter well as you may have seen in other videos on width we use width as top-down betters or as positive expected value betters. We use width to be a proxy for how confident is the sports book on this particular option. Because a sports book is going to ask for less of that hold on books that they're more confident in that their true odds exist between their two amounts because that's what they need to have. And so they're going to encourage more action, more betters to play if they offer less distance between them so as any better knows it's better to play at minus 110 minus 110 versus another sports book that might be offering minus 115 minus 115 on the same lines even recreational casual square betters understand that so you could reasonably infer that the book that's offering lower width would 
be the better book to play at because they are charging less for the same thing, right? So as sports bettors, we're interested in that. The thing is, is that if we're going to use that price difference as a proxy for the confidence of that book, then we actually want to use the percentage value as opposed to the cash value because it's the percentage value that allows you to compare across bet markets that have different amounts of dollars and cents because it's a percentage of that market versus the cost. Now, this is probably confusing because I haven't shown the example yet, but I wanted to introduce it because we're going to go through this a few different times with a few different examples and it will click at some point. What we're going to do now is look at a few examples and hopefully this will click because the visualizations that we have in a train station will allow you to see both visually and understand the math and see the examples in a way that hopefully will make some sense for you. So first off, let's look at this particular bet opportunity. So what we have here is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and De Detroit Lions. We have Jamison Williams receptions over or under two and a half, right? 1.62% EV on this. And what we see here in a train station is we have a few different books. That's great. And we have bet online and pinnacle. So my, my general standard of what I'm using for sharp book is, is bet online and pinnacle. That's fine. And what we'll do here is over here on the right at a train station, you see here is the hold percentage or the VIG percentage. If you want to call it that, you could call it the VIG. Um, but this is the hold that this sports book, so in this case, DraftKings is at the top here. That's the hold that they're taking. And then the width is next to that as a reference point because, and this is what the reason I chose this example is that you can see at the same or very close amounts of width how much that hold percentage changes. So you have a 30 width here at DraftKings and a 30 width here at um bet mgm or at hard rock right and you see you know 36.36 percent difference here in the hold that's a substantial difference now you may notice this black uh dotted line here what that is is the zero marker so it helps you orient where are these odds at and you see all of these um horizontal bars that's where the odds have been so that's the odds history in this case we're not too worried about those so it's it's a lot going on visually but they're really powerful tools we're going to be adding some toggles so you can look at these on and off because it gets a little bit cluttered but very powerful stuff so what you see here is when DraftKings is offering minus 110 and minus 120 again here is that zero marker um when they offer those to make this it's at a higher percentage for a 30 width than where you see this BetMGM and Hard Rock, they're at plus 100 minus 130. So even that little shift to you know, 20 points to left compared to the DraftKings will move that percentage pretty substantially. Well, even then you look at Bovada here, same 30, right? They moved even further. And because of that, the percentage went way down. So think about that. Same width, percentage 6.48% and 5.86%. That's almost an entire percent, like that, not quite an entire percent, but that's getting substantial, right? Six tenths of a percent, that's a 10% difference, basically. So when you're looking at that, that is really something that you're going to want to be attentive to. Now, because of this, see, here's the other part. A lot of books are not going to be changing their width constantly. They're not going to be according these in and out. They're not thinking about it from a hold first perspective. So the hold is going to bounce around a lot. So you don't want to look at it so closely that it's, um, you know, that you're like, oh, that 6.02 is really different than 5.92%. Don't, don't go to that level, but use it as one more signal to consider as you are deciding to make a play. Now, in this case, right, we see bet online with a width of 28 and a 5.92% hold. So we know bet online is a fairly sharp book to begin with, and they're offering a pretty low hold here. Based on this against DraftKings, I might be interested in making this play. It doesn't really matter how we analyze the play in this particular video. I just want you focusing in on this. And so from this particular point of data, seeing a player prop with under 30 traditionally is something that we would be pretty good about. Under 6% means that they have some pretty good confidence there. So on a player prop under 6%, you're feeling pretty good about bet online saying, yeah, we have some confidence here because the confidence is really tied more to that percentage than it is to the width number.
okay? So this is a good example of how similar widths can lead to significant differences in that hold percentage. Fliff is another good example of when you just don't care that you're ripping off all your customers all the time. 50 width with a 9.68% hold. You're seeing Fliff often have 10% holds. This is like playing slot machines in the heart of the Las Vegas Strip versus playing slot machines at some off-strip locals casino somewhere. That's the difference between Bet Online here and Fliff. Is that, and where do you think you're more likely to win money? It ain't gonna be a Pelagio, let me tell you. All right, so let's look at the next example. Here we have some college basketball, Syracuse Orange, Pittsburgh Panthers. Here's a scenario where you see BetMGM rocking 15 set lines. So minus 115, minus 115. Here's our zero marker right here. You have ESPN Bet, 20 cents on either side. So they're rocking a 40 width. See, these are nice round numbers. Bet a line's coming in, and they have a 36 width, but they are over here in a place where it's further out so on a percentage basis it's much better at bet online so on this one you were saying okay hold here really good compared to the rest of the market bet online is definitely giving you signals here saying yes we are confident in this play let's go make it and this 132.2 this is the no vig odds so what no vig odds mean is that this is the number you would bet at with a friend where there's no sports book being paid to offer the bet to all comers right on either side and if it's just you and a friend you can make that bet with no vig at all and you're both going to get a better price than what you would at most sports books right so keep that in mind that when we calculate this here and this we're calculating purely based on bet online because they're the most confident this is the fair odds this is what it should be plus or minus 132 now, in this case, we can actually get a better price at BetMGM than what fair odds are, and that's why we would go play at BetMGM minus 115 on the under in this Zach Austin assists prop. This is positive EV betting at its finest. Now, this is actually the advanced part of understanding the hold percentage and why this is where you're going to uh, be more confident or less confident in a particular bet. We're actually going to go back. I have a bunch of videos that cover... A lot of the basics, I recorded them a long time ago. It's actually kind of funny because I'm like looking at a like young grasshopper train in his, in his naive ways. And I'm going through some of the concepts. The concepts are relatively you know accurate. I still did a fairly decent job. But I'm going to go back and, and revisit some of those concepts with a more advanced perspective and a more advanced tool. So, But for now, I really wanted to get this video done because the hold percentage here is something that not enough people are thinking about or talking about. And quite frankly, it's the number to use instead of width. A lot of the time you see these numbers are pretty similar but when you look at these numbers they're all over the place and that's for a reason bet online here is more confident they have better numbers go make that play a bet mgm right okay next example georgia tech yellow jackets we have ian sheffelin threes over or under 0.5 now in this case what's interesting is you see a width of 30 for these two books being shown as some positive ev sure this Bovada ESPN, higher width, higher percentage, fine. Again, straddling the same theoretical line. But Bet Online here has come in with some heavy market movement to the right. And you might say, in isolation, you might say, well, that's curious, but we like the movement because that shows that they did it with intention. And when you do it with intention and the hold is lower, Along with the width, which is reasonable, but at where they've moved it to, on a percentage basis, this is great. See, the width here wouldn't tell you what the hold here does. Hold here tells you bet online is so much more confident than the rest of this market, whereas the width wouldn't have told you that at all. <laughs> with the width, you're like, I don't know if I want to play a width of 37 on an Ian Sheffley in threes. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You want to play this. So that's where you couple this understanding of the heavy market movement to the right. And not only do they have the lowest hold in the market, you actually have an arbitrage play, a four point arbitrage play with DraftKings. This is where, because we offer these visual tools at A Train Station, you just can't compete with this. This gives you an insight into what's happening in this betting market, unlike anything else out there. Nobody else does this. And that's why what we're talking about here is so powerful. Granted, if you don't know what you're doing, you could be making a whole bunch of bad decisions. Hence why I'm creating this video to try to explain how to do it, <laughs> right? So that's what we're trying to do. But again, this play, 
We got some really heavy signals. Go play at DraftKings now. Go do it, right? Not to mention that there's a pattern around DraftKings unders that we covered in the last video. As you definitely want to make this play. I might stop the video recording, go make this play, and then go back to the video recording how much I like this play. Okay. Finally, let's look at one more example. Western Michigan Broncos and Akron Zips. Okay. Here's a situation. We have a market that is heavily confident, right? And compared to what we were just looking at with player props, this is another market that has, you know, pretty low holds, right? Like you see 5.17, 4.35, wits in the 30, 27 range. Again, you don't have to use them in isolation. You just need to understand that this doesn't mean the same thing as hold. Width is a useful understanding of price differences. Hold is the thing that tells you how confident the book actually is. Now, granted, Sometimes the difference between 27 and 30 isn't very big because they're not going to just change that width all the time. So you want to look at them both. You want to be thinking about them both, but they can mean different things in different contexts. Like that's the thing about data analytics anywhere. It's all about the context of that data. It's not just a number. You don't say, well, that number is bigger. Let's bet it. No, these things are complicated, right? There's a lot of nuance going on in here. So you have to listen. You have to listen to that data story and say, hey, what is it? The totality of what's happening here. Can I understand a pattern and can it be profitable if I act? with that information, right? So in this case, what's really interesting here is that everybody seems to have a certain amount of confidence, right? Pinnacle has not even the highest degree of confidence. They're not of the lowest hold in the market, but they're pretty confident, right? We like Pinnacle on their, their confidence in this kind of play. We like that it seems like there's been a lot of line movement in this market. There's been a lot of line movement in this market, right? It's been all over the place. And right now, FanDuel, has actually moved very little compared to most of the other books. So you see all of these crazy lines, hard to even pick out which is which, right? But that tells you something too. What that tells you is FanDuel might be a little bit slow on the draw, right? You see them starting to fade to the right here, but all these other books have been all over and you can see this, this Novig line at 109 reflecting just pinnacle. Pinnacles are only weighted book here. There are only sharp book in this market. And when we do that, we could say, okay, maybe we want to make that play at FanDuel. What's interesting, especially here too, is how close you are to an arbitrage or an offset bet. You're only one point off here at FanDuel versus Pinnacle. So if you kind of ignored everything else but FanDuel and Pinnacle here, and you just said, okay, what does that tell us? FanDuel, higher price with a width of 30. So they're taking more. On a percentage basis, we're saving eh, ballpark half a percent. So Pinnacle offering half a percent on a price adjusted confidence level we like that you know the 22 versus 30 on a width certainly um puts us in range right and then you say okay who has been adjusting more to what's going on in the market well pinnacle will spend all over the place so one would expect that pinnacle is more sensitive to what's happening and you start to put this all together and that leads you to say yeah pinnacle's more confident they've been offering more competitive pricing they're in line with a lot of the rest of the market. FanDuel has moved less, so they're less sensitive. They have a pretty significantly different view. There's still a fair degree of confidence, but from a percentage basis, as you start to get down to the fours, you don't mess with Pinnacle on this. You make the play at FanDuel, right? And it's not a player prop. This is a pretty solid college basketball play. Go make the play at FanDuel. That's it, right? So decent EV. You got a 5% EV here. You should be able to look at this and say, I don't know if it's at, you know, if, if, Pinnacle is just close to right. Look at all that distance you have for this to be a positive EV play. This is your Novig line. You have 11 points to work with here. If Pinnacle's a little bit off, you still get a lot of value. You go and you you crush this bet. You bet this at pretty aggressive bet sizing, right? I just want to show how it kind of comes together in analyzing the actual bet and making that decision, right? And that's the thing is that you have to be able to look at these diagrams, look at these hold, hold percentages, look at these widths, look at what Pinnacle's doing, look at what the other books are doing, see where there's market patterns, see how much the lines moved. All of this information is there for you visually right there. And then you got details underneath here if you need to look up something or whatever, that's fine. You can get to the, the long list of numbers if you want to. But the fact is, is that by you just glancing at the screen, you can very quickly assess what is going on and what action should I take and let's go because you have more bets to make, right? So with that, hopefully this has been useful in looking at, you know, because it's one thing to understand the theory. It's one thing to understand the theory of width and the theory of hold. 
But it's another thing to understand, how does this help you make money sports betting, right? How does this help you make the best decisions when you're considering a play? Because at Adrian Station, we don't just say, here's a list, go bet it, everybody. That's, that's, for, that's for people who aren't serious about this, right? We're serious about this. We're here to say, hey, look at this, understand the different points of view, the different things the data tells you, and start to understand, at the end of the day, you got to decide. Do I make this decision? Do I make this play? Do I not make this play? How much do I make this play for if I'm going to make this play? And how does this play fit in alongside the rest of the portfolio of plays that I've done today or over a period of time? All right. So there's a lot more to this as you get deeper. And these videos on strategy and understanding how we're breaking down plays and how these different metrics impact how we interpret the data story. All of these things are essential if you want to elevate your game to the highest level you can be. Right. Not all of us are cut out to be professional betters. I'm not. I am not. I would never consider myself a professional better. Yeah, am I a sharp better? Yeah. I think I understand a few things, but I'm not a professional better. I would never be able to handle the swings. I couldn't emotionally deal with betting thousands of dollars on every single game. Can't do it. Right. Even if I could get the action, I don't want to do it. Right. I love thinking through the game, though. I love thinking about the plays, and I can definitely tell you I understand data and can help you understand that data at your level. And you can exceed what I'll ever do as a gambler or as a better myself, and you'll be able to take it with focus. You'll be able to take it so far, so far. So we're here to help you. We're here to help give you the tools that you need to be able to execute this way. Nobody else has done this. Nobody else will be able to do the things that we have coming up for you. And with that... Hey, I hope this conversation around width and hold percentage is meaningful to you and is helping you think about things in new ways and ultimately will help you regardless of what tool you use. We'd love to have you join as a member of A-Train Station, but regardless of what tool you use, hopefully this helps you understand and get a little bit better and level that playing field with the sports books. So with that, thank you all for joining. This train is leaving the station. Until next time, save the units for the bros and do your betting like the pros. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.